Hello guys and welcome to another video. Now, it feels like it's been about six months since I last put a video up on the channel. I do have to apologize. I've been very, very busy over the past month, especially over the Christmas and New Year break. You know, I didn't actually take a break away from work at all. Of course, I did take some time out of actually actively trading the markets. However, there was a lot of sort of business prep and stuff like that that I had to dedicate time towards going into 2021. And here we are in 2021, we are basically full steam ahead. For those of you who have been following us for a little while, you'll know that this year we are actually becoming a proprietary trading firm as well as the education we do provide. We are going to be funding traders who physically trade for us on our trading floor. Now there are a lot of logistics going on in the background that are going to facilitate, you know, that business expansion. We have an office move, uh, you know, we have trader interviews, we're looking for talent to fund as well, you know, so there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. Now, as well as that, going into this year, I'm also venturing into the futures market, as well as the FX, the indices and stuff that I already currently trade. I am moving into trading futures intraday. So, you know, I'm gonna have a very, very busy year and hopefully I can take you guys along on that journey as well. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through how I actually get prepared for the week and why I think it's essential that you do your prep for the week on the weekend rather than waiting until Monday morning, right? Now, when it comes to that prep work, I actually prefer to get that done on a Saturday rather than a Sunday. I find that on a Saturday, the markets are still fresh in my mind from the week prior, and it puts me in a really good position to get everything set up and then just take my Sunday to kind of relax and recuperate before that 10 p.m. open. Now, for me, the biggest benefit to doing that prep work on the weekends is it gives you plenty of time to make decisions. Of course, in the markets I trade, which are indices, commodities, and FX, those markets don't move over the weekend. They close at 10 p.m. my time on a Friday and open at 10 p.m. on the Sunday night, right? So when I come in on the weekends, I can look at a market anywhere, you know, from five, 10, even 15 or 20 minutes, I can stare at a market and nothing's going to change. Now, what this does is it gives me a lot of time to think to prepare, to look at areas above market, to look at areas below market, and decide those kind of areas that I would like to trade. Now, during the week, of course, the markets are moving. When there's a little bit of volume, there's a little bit of velocity behind them, and you know, all of your markets are moving at the same time, it's a lot harder to make those well thought out decisions, right? You have a lot less time to make decisions. And so if you come in on the weekend and you can get as much prep work done as possible, plan out as much and as far ahead as possible, those levels that you would like to do business at, it means that during the week when the market trades into them aggressively, you've already got you know a plan written out of exactly what you want to do when the market gets there. So it saves you having to make those quick decisions in the moment. So now I'm gonna take you through exactly how I do get set up for the weekend. Now, on a Saturday morning, I usually like to, you know, go to a cafe or something like that, a coffee shop and grab a coffee to take out. And then I'll head into the office, sit down at my desk and take a few hours to plan what I want to do for the week ahead. Now, the first thing I'll do when I come in is open my MetaTrader and look at my markets in a tiled layout, first looking at the weekly time frame. So I'll change each chart to that weekly time frame and see what they all look like together, you know, so I have 15 markets there. I'll look at them all in that tiled sequence on the weekly and see what each pair is doing, right? Now, the reason I like to do this in a tiled layout is I can get a feel for what the markets are doing in relation to one another. I like to observe the correlations on my markets. Of course, you'll know the correlations that happen year round. For example, dollar Swiss is an inversely correlated pair to Euro dollar. You know, cable is obviously an inversely correlated pair to euro pound, etc. But what you'll find is that the market will go through phases where certain markets are moving in correlation and certain markets are moving in inverse correlation. This can happen over an hour, this can happen over a day, a week, a month, sometimes even a quarter or a year. So, you know, I like to keep an eye on those correlations and see how markets are moving in respect to one another. Another way you can do this is you can use the OANDA currency correlation. I'll probably leave a link to it on the screen somewhere. That simply gives you a heat map and you know you see little sort of bubble icons and it shows you the correlation between different pairs. That's another thing to keep an eye on, right? So now that I have my markets on that weekly time frame, I will open up the rest of my screens. I usually put Bloomberg on my top right screen at the weekends. I listen to Bloomberg news. You can sort of pick up little things subconsciously and consciously even for how the markets are gonna be moving into next week. 
you know, whether there's vaccine news expected, whether certain countries are getting vaccines, whatever it may be, right? you'll get those little clues of what's gonna be happening into that next week. Now, if anything sort of piques my interest that said on Bloomberg, perhaps an interview or some data that they believe could be released, it's maybe not gonna be on an economic calendar. I'll simply write that down as well. I like to keep uh, a simple little notebook beside me whilst I'm preparing for the week and basically write down anything that I think could be, could be useful, right? So I'll of course write down anything to do with the pairs that I'm looking at. If there's news coming out, for example, they may say that, you know, there's a, a Pfizer vaccine shortage in Europe. When I'm looking at my Euro pairs and I have my notes on what I'd like to do during the week, I'm gonna write down those little things and, you know, in terms of the fundamentals, what could be coming out, just to stay aware of it. As I say, not everything's gonna be on the economic calendar and you can't just rely on that, you know, to to provide you that info. If you're already prepared for it, you already know that that data could be coming out. When it does come out, I'm not saying you're potentially gonna trade it, but you're not surprised by it. Now on my top left screen, I have my Twitter feeds open as normal. If you've seen my desk setup video, it was one of the last videos I actually put up. You'll see that I use tweeting uh, to show all of my Twitter dashboards. I follow some traders on there and some news services as well. For the same reason, I have Bloomberg open. Anything that they talk about for the coming week that I think is interesting, of course, I'll note down as well. Now on my bottom right screen, I have an Excel spreadsheet with multiple columns, right? And that's my weekly plan. So as well as writing down a handwritten plan, I also have a digital copy that I have there that I can very quickly reference throughout the week. Now on that Excel spreadsheet, I have a column for each asset that I trade. I have a column for what my bias says, any observations I have. If there's a head and shoulders on the daily, that's getting noted in there. If there's a double top below market, that's going in there too, right? I will also add in levels I'd like to buy or sell from, and I'll also add in any news events that are on the economic calendar for the week ahead. So now that I've got my setup ready, and I have my charts on the weekly in that tiled layout, as I say, I'm gonna go through and make any notes, anything I see from that weekly time frame. Then the next thing I do is drop to the daily time frame again across all of my charts in that tiled layout and any observations that I see on that daily time frame. You know, so we do this in sort of layers. We'll start with the charts tiled on a weekly, we'll have a quick scan, no anything down. Charts tiled on a daily, quick scan, no anything down. Then we get a little bit more in depth, right? So now that we've got our sort of our preliminary um, notes, our sort of surface level notes, I will then make the charts large screen, right? And I'll go chart by chart. Again, start on the weekly. Anything else I see there, that's gonna get noted down. Drop to the daily, anything else gets noted down. Then I'll drop to the hourly. Now, the hourly is a time frame that I tend to execute trades on. So this is where I'm actually picking those levels that I'd like to buy or sell at. Of course, I'm looking for those levels below market to buy. I'm looking for those levels above market to sell. I'm looking for, you know, trend lines that are gonna break and retest potentially. And I'm also observing things like where ATR comes in to the upside, where ATR comes into the downside. And that's going to give me an indication of how quickly some of these moves are gonna play out. Now, on my Excel spreadsheet, I will of course note those levels I'd like to buy and sell at. And then I color code the assets, either red, orange, or yellow, based on where ATR is with reference to where the market is and where I'd actually like to trade. Now to explain that, um, you know, in case you, you kind of don't understand what I'm talking about there, if the market is here and ATR looks like this, you know, the market's trading here and the level I want to trade at on the open, um, you know, or into next week is with any current ATR, then I'm gonna mark that red on my Excel spreadsheet. That basically means that there's a very good probability that the market could get to that level I'd like to trade into the start of next week, right, relatively soon, because it's within ATR. Now, if there are levels that I'd like to trade that are far above ATR or far below ATR, but I still think the market could trade into next week, I color code them yellow. And then something that is, you know, at the sort of upper end of ATR or lower end of ATR or just beyond, I will color code that orange. And that signifies that as potential, you know, the market could potentially get there relatively early in next week but it's not something that I urgently need to watch. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that if something is orange or yellow, an asset on my spreadsheet, that I'm not gonna be watching it closely, but those that are marked red, 
I pretty much am going to be watching from the open. So this leads quite nicely into Sunday night. Now, what I will then do after I have all of my charts set up the way I, I like them, I will then save the template for each chart on MT4. Now, if you use TradingView, you know, that automatically saves. Unfortunately, on MetaTrader, I have to individually save each of those charts. Now, here's where it gets, you know, one step further. I save the template for each of those charts onto the hard drive of the PC and then onto uh, an external hard drive as well. So I have two copies of each chart template in case, you know, one, if the hard drive goes down in my computer or my computer goes down into next week, I have an external hard drive. I can quickly grab another computer, plug my hard drive in and I'm good to go, right? I can plug that external hard drive in. What this also means is that I can take that external hard drive home with me and when I get home on the Sunday open, I don't have to come in here into the office. I can set up my home setup, plug that external hard drive in and open up all of my charts that I have here in the office and I'm good to go, right? Now, on the Sunday open, I will be looking at those assets that I've marked in red on my Excel spreadsheet for my weekly plan. I'll be watching them to see if the market trades into them on Sunday night, usually stay up till you know half 11 or midnight, so about an hour and a half to two hours after the market actually opens, to see if the market's trading towards those areas that I would like to trade from. Now, if I'm looking for price action in those areas rather than setting pending orders, unfortunately, I am gonna have to stay up, you know, until the market gets there. Typically, you know, the, the last point that I would throw in the towel would maybe be sort of 1 a.m., half one, if we get to that sort of time and the market hasn't quite got there to those areas that I'm interested in, I'm happy to throw in the towel and just accept that the market could get there, you know, uh, during the night, during the Asia session while I'm asleep. Now, of course, when I finish up on a Sunday night, again, on my home setup, I'm saving all of those templates. If I've made any adjustments to my charts, I'm saving them back to that external hard drive unplugging it and then on Monday morning when I arrive in the office about quarter past seven that gets plugged into my computer and I load up all those charts again ready for a new week. Now I hope this video has been a good insight into how I get set up for the week ahead and perhaps if it's not something you already incorporate into your weekend plan you know maybe it's something that you can maybe you can take some tips from this video how to get set up how to be prepared you know coming into a new week. We already have it tough as it is, you know, being traders in relatively fast moving markets. You know, we're, we're going through relatively crazy times. There's a lot of macroeconomic factors pushing the markets at the moment. We're not seeing, you know, the typical uh, economic data that we would normally see moving the market like it used to. We're seeing, you know, lots of surprise news and stuff like that. We already have it pretty tough and, you know, not being prepared just adds another layer of difficulty to that that you just don't need. So, you know, if you take something from this video, if you can spare that time on the weekends, you know, one or two hours on a Saturday or a Sunday, just to make sure you're prepared, it goes a long, long way. Another thing to note very quickly, at the moment on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that there's a lot of fake accounts going around, right? Now, unfortunately last year, my old Instagram uh, got hacked by, I presume, one of these fake accounts and I actually lost it and ended up having to start a new Instagram, you know, pretty much from the beginning. Now, the Instagram that I currently use is just Sam double underscore Kavanagh. Now, what tends to happen to pretty much anyone who follows me, I'm not sure why Instagram isn't doing anything about this, but pretty much anyone who follows me on Instagram, they will get a message from a fake account. They will have the same profile picture as me, you know, the same pictures on their feed, similar followers, but a slightly different name, whether they have three underscores in their name or, you know, full stop or something like that. They'll message you and say, you know, try and sell you some, some broker or some, you know, crypto currency scam. Please, please be careful. I will never follow you randomly out of the blue. You know, I will also never message you first. If you check on my Instagram profile, I literally have a highlight called fake accounts and it literally says, I will never message you first. I have that in my bio as well. So please be vigilant. If you follow me and my bio says, I will never message you first, and then you get a message from someone saying they're me, you know, you gotta kind of make that connection and realize that it isn't me. So, so please do be careful out there, guys. Unfortunately, you know, these people basically uh, prey upon those of you who enjoy this channel and trust what I've got to say. And, you know, they sort of use that trust that you have to try and scam you, which is really, really unfortunate. 
But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do drop it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.